Chapter 301 Prevail In the aftermath of our violent clash, a sense of grim satisfaction filled the watery depths. The shade, once a source of terror and darkness, had finally met his end. As I basked in the victory of our hard-fought battle, the ocean's depths reverberated with a newfound calmness. The water elements, having fulfilled their purpose, began to recede, their ethereal forms dissipating into the vast expanse from whence they came. In the tranquil embrace of the ocean's depths, I beheld the scattered remains of the defeated bastard, the lingering traces of his malevolence dissipating into the surrounding waters. With a sense of satisfaction and triumph coursing through my body, I rose from the depths, my massive wings carrying me effortlessly above the waves. As I soared through the cerulean sky, the remnants of battle drifting in the air, a wide grin spread across my draconic visage. The victory against the shade had been hard won. Yet, there was still one matter that required my attention, the humans who had valiantly stood their ground in my absence. With purposeful strides, I journeyed back towards the battlefield, where the echoes of clashing steel and the resolute shouts of the soldiers still lingered. The humans, having weathered the storm of the Shade's assault, awaited my return, their expressions a mix of relief, awe, and gratitude. As my massive form descended upon the battlefield, the once scattered and disoriented humans quickly regained their composure, their faces alight with renewed hope. The remaining shades, now leaderless and thrown into disarray, scattered like leaves in the wind, their feeble attempts at resistance quelled by the sheer presence of the cosmic dragon. The resounding cheers of the humans echoed through the air, a symphony of triumph and determination. Their weapons gleamed in the sunlight, held high as a testament to their unwavering resolve. Inspired by their unwavering spirit, I joined in their celebration, my mighty roar shaking the very ground beneath our feet. The battlefield trembled in response, a tangible display of the power coursing through my draconic form. The Horde of Shades, once an imposing force, now stumbled about in confusion, their cohesion shattered by the absence of their fallen leader. They were no match for our united front, their defeat inevitable. With a voice that carried across the battlefield, I addressed the valiant warriors who had stood firm against the encroaching darkness. My words rang out with authority and conviction, fueling their determination to reclaim what was rightfully theirs. The air crackled with anticipation as I spoke, my voice a beacon of guidance amidst the chaos. Follow me. I proclaimed, my voice resonating with the weight of wisdom and indomitable strength. Together, we shall reclaim these lands. Let your hands wield the weapons of justice, let your hearts beat with the rhythm of defiance. This day marks the turning tide, the rebirth of your rightful dominion. The humans, emboldened by my words, responded with thunderous roars and shouts of agreement. Their eyes gleamed with newfound determination as they took up their weapons, ready to march alongside me. They understood that their fate was no longer solely dictated by the whims of fate, but by the strength of their own hands and the unity of their spirits. As I spread my wings wide, I led the charge, soaring ahead with purpose. The humans followed in my wake, their steps resolute, their resolve unyielding. With each step taken, the echoes of our combined determination reverberated through the land, heralding the dawn of a new era for this plane. Together, we advanced with me leading the charge. The battlefield, once stained with despair and uncertainty after I left, transformed into a crucible of hope and resilience. The shades, now reduced to mere remnants of a defeated force, scattered before us like shards of a shattered dream. With every stride, every swing of their weapons, the humans reclaimed their lands, inch by hard-fought inch. The taste of victory lingered in the air, propelling them forward with an unwavering belief in our cause. The land itself seemed to respond, offering its support and blessing from the elements as we pressed onward, pushing back the darkness that had encroached for far too long. And so we marched on, the harmonious symphony of a single dragon and a large human army echoing across the land. Hope seemed to bloom anew, the manna and the world itself trembled in anticipation of the future. As the radiant sun dipped below the majestic peaks of the mountains, casting an ethereal glow upon the battlefield, the last remnants of the once formidable shades crumbled to the ground their malevolent essence dissipating into a swirling wisp of dark smoke that danced across the twilight sky. A hushed silence descended upon the weary soldiers, their expressions a mixture of disbelief and awe. We had emerged victorious, triumphant in our struggle against the encroaching darkness. A collective sigh of relief swept through the ranks, mingling with the pained cries of grief that echoed through the air. The price of victory was heavy, and the fallen were honored with solemn reverence. Battle-hardened warriors, their faces etched with exhaustion, sank to the ground, their bodies weary and hearts heavy with the weight of loss. Amidst the aftermath, the surviving generals, their armor dented and stained with the remnants of battle, 
gathered before me. They approached with a mix of reverence and gratitude, their eyes reflecting the remnants of the fading twilight. I stood apart from them, my gaze fixed upon the northern horizon, where I could sense the presence of more shades in the distance. As the generals came closer to me, their gazes filled with awe and worship, awaiting my guidance. I could sense their anticipation, their reliance on my knowledge, and innate connection to the forces that shape this world, the elements. I turned from the north, meeting their eyes. Though this battle has been won, the echoes of darkness still linger in the distance, I spoke slowly. The shades may have been vanquished from these lands, but their presence remains elsewhere. The generals nodded solemnly as I continued, for now, we shall rest. You deserve it, hearing that their eyes lit up in pride as they lowered their heads in respect. And so, beneath the starlit canopy, we took a moment to breathe, the humans finding solace in the knowledge that they had survived, that they had prevailed. The winds whispered tales of our triumph, carrying our unwavering spirit across the land. Chapter 302 A New Dawn With the defeat of the massive shade horde behind us, the two armies converged, their unity a testament to the resilience of humanity. My primary objective, it seemed, had been accomplished. In the following week, I dedicated myself to aiding the soldiers in cleansing the tainted surroundings, meticulously purging the remnants of the Shade's influence. Reinforcements arrived in a steady stream, their arrival heralded by the clatter of armor and the resolute determination etched upon their faces. They carried with them much-needed supplies, bolstering the ranks and providing respite for the weary. Those wounded in battle or unable to continue the fight were granted reprieve and escorted back to safety where they could find solace and healing. With my lead, we pressed forward, our progress unyielding, as if guided by an unseen force. The corrupted lands trembled beneath our collective might, retreating inch by inch. Step by step, we forged ahead, carving a path through the Shade's dominion. Each advance was hard won, each victory savored, knowing that with every conquered territory, we reclaimed a fragment of a once stolen land. As I led the fights alongside the valiant soldiers, my presence a beacon of hope and strength, I couldn't help but wonder about Sidis and Brita. Their progress, shrouded in uncertainty, remained a constant thought in the back of my mind. I hoped that their path was as smooth and steadfast as mine, that their own endeavors would yield favorable outcomes. Amidst the relentless march, brief moments of respite allowed them to catch their breath and share stories of valor and resilience. The camaraderie between the southern and northern soldiers grew stronger, fortified by shared experiences and the common purpose that bound them together. The war cries and battle hymns reverberated through the air, igniting the spirit of unity and reminding them of our collective strength. With each passing day, the tide of darkness seemed to recede its somewhack, replaced by the dawning light of a brighter future. The lands we traversed bore witness to our unyielding spirit, rejuvenated by my presence and the power of our combined efforts. We had become a beacon of hope in a world previously overshadowed by despair, causing the elements seem to return as well, reclaiming what was once theirs. And so, I continued to lead, assuming my role as a guiding force, my wings enveloping the soldiers in a protective embrace, my thoughts wandered to the stark contrast between this world and my own. The elements of this realm seemed more prone to respond to my presence, rejuvenated by the mere touch of my essence. The oppressive darkness that the shades had cast began to recede as if cowed by the radiance and resilience that emanated from our united front. Questions swirled within my mind, each one a thread to unravel the mysteries of this world. Was it solely my presence that triggered this change, or were there other forces at play, dormant energies waiting to be awoken? I contemplated the intricate web of causality that shaped our realities, seeking answers in the depths of my ancient inherited knowledge. The land beneath our feet, once ravaged by the shadow's touch, now seemed to flourish in the wake of our progress. Verdant grasses peeked through the scars of battle, and vibrant flowers bloomed where darkness once reigned. The very air carried a newfound vitality, as if exhaling a collective sigh of relief. Could it be that my presence helped the elements and acted as a catalyst for the renewal of the land? As we pressed forward, I couldn't help but wonder. It seemed like my role extended beyond that of a warrior or leader. I was a somewhat of a bridge between realms, a harbinger of change and rebirth. The very essence of my being seemed to resonate with the energies and elements of this world. The mysteries that enveloped this realm became the focus of my thoughts. The answers I sought lay veiled waiting to be unraveled. Yet, for now, I accepted the power of my along with the element's collective will and the transformative influence we had upon this land. And so, with each stride we took, with each victory won, I carried the weight of this newfound awareness. The soldiers who marched by my side were emboldened by the hope I exuded. 
As the sun set on the horizon, casting a golden glow upon yet another battlefield, I allowed myself a moment of reflection. Slowly but surely, the realm began to pulsate with renewed life, a testament to the profound impact I had on the tapestry of existence. Amidst the bustling aftermath of our triumph, a figure approached me, a general whose weathered countenance bore witness to a life dedicated to battle. His bald head glistened under the waning sunlight, his muscular frame emanating an aura of authority and experience. A cascade of impressive length flowed from his chin, his beard a testament to the wisdom and resilience etched within the lines of his face. With a deep bow, he addressed me, his voice brimming with pride and reverence, Great Ether, we have successfully retaken the valley, his words punctuated by an unwavering sense of accomplishment. I acknowledged his report with a nod, my gaze sweeping across the vast expanse of soldiers diligently tending to their duties, cleansing the scars of battle and tending to the wounded. Well done, General, I commended, my voice carrying a note of appreciation for their unwavering dedication. A glimmer of satisfaction danced in the general's eyes as he basked in the acknowledgement of our triumph. It is an honor to fight alongside you, my lord, he exclaimed, his respect evident in both his words and the crisp military salute that accompanied them. A soft chuckle escaped my mouth. Looking out across the valley, where signs of restoration and progress emerged amidst the debris, I replied, we shall await the arrival of reinforcements and supplies tomorrow before we proceed directly to the capital. The general's eyes gleamed with excitement, his dedication unwavering. With another salute, he affirmed, your word is our command. The general then briskly departed, his steps filled with purpose as he hastened to relay my orders and oversee the ongoing operations. As the echoes of his departure faded, I gracefully descended to the ground, my massive form settling with a gentle thud. My tail curled protectively around me, providing a sense of comfort as I observed the bustling activity surrounding me. The soldiers moved with focused determination. Their tireless dedication stirred a sense of acknowledgement within me. I watched them with a mixture of interest and contentment. The approaching twilight painted the sky with hues of amber and crimson, casting a serene ambience over the valley. In the quietude of the moment, my senses honed in on the familiar presence of Sidis and Brita, their reassuring auras intermingling with the whispers of the wind. It was a comforting sign an indication that their endeavors had thus far progressed without significant obstacles. As I reclined upon the earth, my gaze drifting skyward, I allowed myself a moment of respite. The anticipation of the coming day tugged at my thoughts, intertwining with a quiet sense of satisfaction. The pieces of the puzzle were gradually falling into place, our collective efforts edging us closer to our ultimate objective. With a deep breath, I allowed the tranquil stillness of the evening to wash over me. Tomorrow held the promise of a pivotal moment. I closed my eyes briefly, savoring the serenity of the moment, before reopening them to the sight of soldiers diligently preparing for the challenge that awaited. As the world around me continued to bustle with purpose, I settled into a state of quiet contemplation, my mind focused on the upcoming march toward the capital. With a sense of anticipation, I awaited the dawn of a new day. Chapter 303 Final Battle I The cacophony of clashing weapons and desperate cries reverberated through the air a symphony of chaos that accompanied the relentless battle unfolding below. In the midst of this turmoil, my keen eyes tracked the aerial duel above, where Sidis valiantly faced the swarm of shades hurtling toward him. Their dark forms cut through the sky, their malicious intent palpable even from a distance. The human army, engaged in their own grueling combat on the ground, could spare little attention for the battle unfolding overhead. Their swords clashed against the razor-sharp claws of the shades, their shields held steadfast against the onslaught. Each soldier fought with unwavering determination, their loyalty to their cause eclipsing any fear that threatened to take root. However, amidst the chaos, my focus was drawn to the western side of the battlefield. There, Brita's majestic figure radiated with a radiant light, a beacon of hope that pierced through the gloom. Her formidable aura enveloped the weary soldiers, imbuing them with newfound strength and courage. I watched as their weariness seemed to fade, replaced by a renewed resolve to face the encroaching shades. Brita's presence illuminated the sky, her movements swift and deliberate as she engaged in a relentless dance with the larger shades. Two large ethereal wings appeared behind her back, beating with resolute power and propelling her closer to Sidis, their shared objective bringing them ever closer to regrouping. Each clash with the enemy sent bursts of brilliant energy cascading through the air, testament to the strength and determination that coursed through her being. As the battle raged on, I continued to observe. In the midst of the turmoil, the threads of destiny wove a tapestry of determination and sacrifice. 
The symphony of clashes and shouts intertwined with the pulsating energy of magic and the rhythmic beating of wings, creating a tableau of defiance against the encroaching darkness brought by the shades. The combined human army, bolstered by our reunion, encircled the ancient city, its towering walls casting a foreboding shadow over the battlefield. The air itself seemed heavy with malevolence, as if the ancient capital exuded an aura of darkness that seeped into the souls of all who dared approach. With Sidus and Brita leading the charges, I took to the skies, soaring above the chaos that unfolded below. It was there that my aerial prowess would prove most effective against the looming threats. As I ascended, two colossal shades caught my attention, their formidable presence demanding my immediate attention. The first shade, possessing a twisted semblance of a humanoid form, appeared grotesque and distorted. Its face, void of any discernible features, was replaced by an eerie tangle of dark, writhing tentacles protruding from empty eye sockets. Its very existence defied all notions of normalcy, leaving an unsettling impression upon all who gazed upon it. The second shade was an amorphous mass of swirling darkness, devoid of stable form. Its shifting and undulating nature made it an unpredictable adversary, constantly eluding any attempts to comprehend its true essence. It seemed to mock the boundaries of reality, defying logic and reason with each ephemeral transformation. Without hesitation, I met the oncoming shades head-on. With a burst of speed, I dove towards the humanoid-shaped abomination, my claws poised to strike. The clash of power and primal fury echoed through the skies as I engaged in a fierce aerial duel. I deflected its attempts to ensnare me with its tentacles, maneuvering with agility and precision. Meanwhile, the amorphous shade proved to be a formidable adversary in its own right. Its shifting form and evasive maneuvers made it a challenging target to grasp. However, my draconic instincts honed over countless battles guided my every move. As the battle raged on, the clash of elements and the titanic struggle between dragons and shades painted a vivid tapestry in the sky. The roars of defiance and the explosive bursts of magic reverberated through the air. Amidst the swirling chaos, my focus remained unwavering, my eyes fixed upon the two audacious adversaries that dared challenge my reign. A surge of determination coursed through my veins as I beckoned forth the elemental forces under my command. The water, ever obedient, heeded my call without hesitation. In an instant, a swirling sphere of water materialized around the amorphous shade, ensnaring it within its aqueous grasp. Though its captivity would be brief, it served as a temporary respite, buying me precious moments to redirect my attention towards the humanoid abomination. With a swift motion, I tapped into the depths of my cosmic mana, drawing upon its boundless power. Like a celestial thread descending from the heavens, the ethereal strands of mana cascaded through the fabric of reality and converged upon the humanoid shade. Caught off guard by the sudden onslaught, the abomination had no opportunity to evade its impending fate. In a blinding flash, the shade's form disintegrated, consumed by the cosmic energies that surrounded it. It vanished into the abyss, leaving nothing but a lingering echo of its existence. In that pivotal moment, the tenacious shade defied the confines of the aqueous shackles that had restrained it. Its form quivered with a palpable sense of trepidation, an acknowledgement of the fate that befell its companion. A wicked smile adorned my draconic visage as I relished in its evident fear. The realization that even these formidable creatures could experience dread sent a surge of satisfaction coursing through my being. Well, well, I taunted, my voice laced with amusement. It appears you are not impervious to fear after all. The shade hesitated, its gaze darting nervously between me and where its fallen comrade had just disappeared. A momentary pause hung in the air, as if it contemplated its next move. The balance of power had shifted, and I could sense its wavering resolve. The advantage was undeniably mine and I reveled in the intimidation I exuded. A surge of surprise coursed through me as the fabric of space behind the shade distorted, giving birth to a lethal spear wrought from the depths of darkness mea. With a swift and unerring precision, the obsidian weapon impaled the hapless creature, its form convulsing in a futile attempt to break free. Yet, the malevolent spear drained its very essence, causing the shade's once formidable frame to wither and wilt, succumbing to the consuming darkness that enveloped it. My attention shifted to Sidus, who was engaged in his own arduous battle against two additional shades. Despite the pressing danger, he managed to spare a moment to lock eyes with me, a triumphant smirk gracing his features. His prowess in manipulating the forces of darkness was impressive, and his satisfaction at witnessing my display was evident. Chapter 304 Final Battle 2 Not wanting to be outdone by my little brothers, I unleashed the full might of my wings with a surge of determination 
propelling myself towards Sidis in the encroaching shades. In an instant, I seized the opportunity and caught one of the shadowy beasts off guard, a creature resembling a distorted reflection of our own draconic forms. The uncanny resemblance sent a shiver down my spine, but I swiftly dismissed the unsettling thought, focusing on the task at hand. Engaging the creature in a fierce aerial struggle, I swiftly clasped its neck with my razor-sharp claws, forcefully wrenching it away from my brother. Sidis deftly handled the remaining adversary, allowing me to direct my attention elsewhere. With relentless determination, I descended towards the swarm of shades descending upon the hapless humans below. The ground quaked beneath me as I crashed into the midst of the horde, the impact creating a colossal crater that swallowed countless lesser shades. The sheer force of my attack disintegrated them in an instant, their malevolent forms dissolving into nothingness. The humans, momentarily stunned, quickly recovered their composure, rallying behind my devastating assault. With a surge of primal ferocity, I unleashed a flurry of savage strikes upon the defenseless shade trapped within my grasp. Each swipe of my claws was infused with potent mana, amplifying the destructive power behind my assaults. The creature writhed in agony as its chest became a canvas of deep wounds, seeping with darkness. Unyielding and fueled by a bloodlust that coursed through my veins, I raised my claw high, channeling all my strength into a single decisive blow. In a swift and merciless motion, I brought my talons down, severing the shade's head from its twisted body. Darkness spilled forth, mixing with the echoes of its final wail, as its lifeless form crumpled to the ground before it turned into a puff of dark smoke. As I basked in the euphoria of my impending victory, a sudden surge of danger coursed through my veins, triggering an instinctive response. In a split second, my tail whipped through the air, a desperate attempt to ward off the imminent threat. However, before I could fully comprehend the situation, a powerful blow landed square on my face, sending me crashing down to the unforgiving ground. Grimacing in pain, I directed a fiery glare at the unexpected intruder. The colossal shadowy monster loomed over me, a shocking sight considering I was anything but small. This behemoth, however, dwarfed me, appearing out of nowhere, undetected by my heightened senses. Its monstrous form defied all comprehension, an abomination of twisted limbs and nightmarish appendages. Sinewy and contorted, each limb writhed with an unnatural energy, emanating an aura that reeked of otherworldly malevolence. The creature's skin, if one could call it that, resembled an abyssal void, devouring any trace of light that dared to touch it. An eerie mist swirled and billowed from its colossal frame, reminiscent of a sinister vortex drawing everything into its depths. The monster's head was a macabre creation, a grotesque masterpiece of horror. Countless eyes, aglow with an intense, malicious light, dominated its visage, each one piercing into the very depths of my soul. Its maw, lined with rows upon rows of serrated teeth, stretched unimaginably wide, revealing a terrifying abyss that seemed to devour even the faintest glimmer of hope. Questions flooded my mind. Where had this abomination emerged from, evading my senses until it was too late? How come I failed to anticipate its arrival until it was too late? Aren't you one big ugly bastard? I spat, a feral grin etching its way across my face. The sight of this abomination fueled a surge of bloodlust within me, transforming my excitement into a savage craving for a formidable opponent. Its hideousness only intensified my exhilaration. Towering over me, the colossal shadowy monster presented itself as a prime test of my mettle. A challenge worthy of my prowess, I relished in the face of such a dawning adversary. With defiant bravado, I taunted the creature, summoning my courage to face its immense presence. In my eyes, this colossal shadowy monster became a thrilling opportunity, a chance to prove my strength and prowess in the face of overwhelming odds. To my immediate astonishment, the monster ceased its assault on me, redirecting its myriad gazes towards the battlefield. I watched, a mix of disbelief and frustration consuming me, as its attention fixated on the human army locked in combat with the hordes of lesser shades. My eyes widened as a surge of alarm coursed through me, and I could not help but curse. Oh. Don't you dare do it, you ugly bastard. Mockingly, the colossal shadowy monster lifted one of its contorted limbs, and a malevolent darkness coalesced instantaneously. Swirling with an ominous energy, the blob of darkness distorted the very air around it, cracking and twisting with an eerie resonance. A primal instinct within me warned that diverting it with my cosmic mana would bring catastrophic consequences, potentially destabilizing the very fabric of the realm. This time, I did not have the king to help save the situation. Fuck me. I inwardly cursed, my instincts immediately propelling me into action to intercept the menacing blob of darkness hurtling toward the humans. 
With a surge of power, the earth beneath me erupted, ascending skyward and casting a foreboding shadow over the humans and lesser shades. I swiftly fortified the rising earth with a shield of water, creating a barrier of protection to shield them from the impending danger. Raising my head defiantly towards the heavens, I unleashed a resounding roar that reverberated across the battlefield. Sidus. In that instant, my younger brother comprehended the gravity of the situation. Abandoning his engagement with the shade he had been battling, he swiftly conjured a colossal shield of darkness to reinforce my own, adding an extra layer of defense against the encroaching threat. Just as our combined efforts sought to fortify our defenses, Brita, positioned on the opposite side of the battlefield, seized the opportunity. Her radiant spear soared through the sky with unwavering precision, piercing the ground before the shields and further bolstering the protective barrier. United, we formed an unyielding front, intertwining our individual strengths in a desperate bid to shield ourselves from the imminent devastation. With impeccable timing, our combined efforts materialized just as the ominous blob of darkness hurtled toward us, propelled by unseen forces. In its wake, the very air grew heavy and suffocating, tainted by the encroaching darkness. The world itself seemed to recoil and wither, as if in the grasp of a malevolent force that drained life and vitality from its surroundings. The desolation left behind in the wake of its passage was palpable, casting a shadow of despair upon all who witnessed it. Undeterred, we held our ground, resolute in our determination to confront the impending chaos. Our unified shields of earth, water, darkness, and divine interwove, creating a formidable barrier that stood as our last line of defense. Each layer added a new dimension of protection. Chapter 305 Final Battle 3 The beam of malevolent energy collided with the radiant spear that Brita had unleashed, igniting a blinding brilliance that flooded the battlefield. The sheer intensity forced combatants to shield their eyes, momentarily halting the chaos that had engulfed the surroundings. Within the clash, I could sense the raw power of Brita's divine essence resonating, fiercely contending against the oncoming onslaught. And in a remarkable turn of events, something extraordinary unfolded. The elements, usually subject to our command, surged forward with a shared purpose. Earth, water, and even the reluctant darkness aligned in harmonious cooperation bolstering Brita's shield of divinity. It was as if the elements themselves recognized the urgency and instinctively united to fortify our defense. No guidance was needed from me or Sidis. The elements moved with an innate understanding of their role. The collision of opposing forces enveloped the world in a blinding white light, obscuring all in its brilliance. As the shockwave rippled outward, I instinctively used my mana to shield the human's position behind me, ensuring their safety amidst the ensuing chaos. As the radiance subsided, the barren aftermath of the blast came into view, a lifeless expanse where the monstrous entity was still standing. On the opposite side of the battlefield, Brita stood, her form protected by a shimmering shield, safeguarding both herself and the humans who valiantly fought alongside her. Her telepathic voice resonated in my mind, intertwining with Sidus's consciousness as she imparted her warning, do not utilize the pillars, lest the entire realm is doomed. I acknowledged her message, understanding the grave consequences that it might bring. Turning my attention back to Sidus, a twinge of guilt crept within me, for it was I who had requested his assistance. Yet, he bore no trace of resentment or concern, fully engrossed in the relentless struggle against two formidable shades, his claws unyielding. Dismissing the distractions and refocusing my attention, I banished the lingering thoughts and doubts from my mind. Rita, amidst her ongoing engagements on the battlefield, skillfully manipulated her spear, propelling it into the air with an ethereal grace. Like a radiant star streaking through the heavens, it ascended towards the colossal monstrosity that loomed ahead. Reacting swiftly, I unfurled my mighty wings and propelled myself forward, trailing closely behind the spear's luminous trail. With my claws primed and gleaming with determination, I braced myself for the imminent clash, ready to strike with unwavering resolve. As the colossal shade swatted away Brita's spear with a monstrous limb, the sheer force of the impact caused the appendage to burst into a grotesque explosion of dark energy. Despite the setback, the monstrous creature's unyielding gaze remained unperturbed, its multitude of eyes fixating on its new target, me. Undeterred by its intimidating presence, I braced myself for the impending clash. With a swift flick of my wings, I evaded its initial lunging strike, narrowly escaping its gnarled grasp. The rush of wind and the resounding crackle of energy filled the air as I maneuvered around the beast, my claws poised to strike with unwavering resolve. I am for its grotesque face, 
My claw embedded with mana was sharper than ever causing me to easily rip through the side of the bastard's face. This, however, did not seem to do anything as the monster simply used another one of its massive limbs to swamp me from behind, the speed of the attack catching me off guard as I was quickly sent crashing to the ground. As I plummeted to the ground, pain coursing through my body, I fought to regain control of the situation. The monster, sensing my vulnerability, raised its limb once more, ready to strike a final blow. But before it could bring its massive appendage down upon me, a blinding light enveloped the battlefield. Brita, channeling her divine powers, unleashed a radiant burst of energy from her spear that rushed out from the ground and engulfed the monstrous creature. The blast caused the ground to shake and the air to crackle with intense power. The monster's limbs recoiled, momentarily stunned by the overwhelming force. As I recovered from the impact and regained my composure, a surge of anger and determination coursed through my veins. I refused to let this abomination overpower me. With a fierce roar, I unleashed a concentrated beam of dragon breath from my jaws, aiming directly at the monster's exposed face. The blast hit its mark, causing the creature to recoil in pain and fury. Its grotesque features distorted and contorted, but it remained defiant. Undeterred, I swiftly maneuvered in the air, evading its retaliatory strikes and slashing at what looked like its vulnerable spots with my claws. Brita, seizing the opportunity, joined the assault once more and continued her support from afar. Her spear, imbued with divine energy, pierced through the monster's appendage, causing it to erupt into a burst of darkness. The battle raged on, the clash of our attacks echoing through the air, causing the battlefield to tremble under our combined assault. The monstrous creature, already weakened by our relentless strikes, found itself facing yet another formidable adversary. Sidus, descending from the sky with astonishing speed, just in time as he finally managed to dispatch of the two shades he was fighting against. He unleashed a torrent of fury upon the beast. His claws, sharp and deadly, tore through the air and left a trail of devastation as he landed a powerful blow on the creature's back. The force of his attack created a large gash, exposing the monster's vulnerable flesh to the elements. Dark energy seeped from the wound, further sapping the creature's strength. Brother, now. Sidus roared, his voice filled with urgency and determination. With a swift and powerful motion, he summoned dark tentacles from the ground, intertwining them around the colossal monster's countless limbs, momentarily restraining its movements. Realizing that time was of the essence, I seized the opportunity created by Sidus intervention. Rita, her divine power surging through her, broke free from the shades that had surrounded her. In a flash of light, she soared towards us, her hand outstretched as her spear materialized in her grasp. With unparalleled precision and speed, she descended upon the monster, her divine spear piercing through its head with unyielding force. The impact caused the beast's head to disintegrate into a puff of black smoke, vanishing before our eyes. Not wasting a moment, I followed Brita's lead, unleashing the full power of my dragon breath. A large ball of energy, swirling and building in intensity materialized as I opened my jaws wide and released a torrent of searing heat and destructive energy directed toward the monster's vulnerable body. The force of my dragon breath tore through the air, converging upon the creature's form. The intense force enveloped the monster, searing its flesh and reducing it to ash. The battlefield shook under the weight of my attack, the impact echoing across the land. Chapter 306 The End of the Mission A month had elapsed since that fateful final battle, marking a turning point in the war against the Shades. With our combined might, Sidus, Brita, and I formed an indomitable trio, an unstoppable force that surged through the battlefield. Together, we mowed down the hordes of shades, leaving their lifeless forms scattered in our wake. Their numbers dwindled rapidly as we pressed forward, relentless in our pursuit of their annihilation. The battle was grueling, each engagement fraught with danger and sacrifice. The human alliances fought valiantly, their determination unwavering despite the heavy losses they endured. Though the cost of victory weighed heavily upon them, it was a testament to their resilience and unwavering spirit that they had survived the brink of annihilation. As the remaining shades grew weaker and their presence waned, we devoted ourselves to hunting them down, scouring the realm to cleanse it of their vile presence. Sidus and I would take to the skies, our wings carrying us swiftly from one location to another, while Brita remained behind using her divine powers to help with the restoration progress. Together, we purged the land, hunting down the remnants of the shades with unwavering determination. One by one, they fell before our might, their existence erased from the realm. The human alliances, witnessing our relentless pursuit and the diminishing threat, found solace and hope in our presence. 
The month was a relentless campaign, but with each passing day, the world grew safer, the darkness receding. We saw the signs of progress and restoration all around us. The capital, once shrouded in shadow, was finally reclaimed, its streets filled with the sounds of reconstruction and new life. Our work was slowly coming to an end. The rest was up to the humans. There were wounds to heal, both physical and emotional. The scars of the war ran deep, etched upon the land and etched upon the hearts of those who had endured the turmoil. And so after taking care of the last of the shades, we stood alongside the humans, offering our support and guidance, aiding in the process of rebuilding and healing. With our mission deemed accomplished, a profound sense of fulfillment washed over me as I ascended a hill overlooking the newly reclaimed capital. From this vantage point, I could witness the magnitude of our triumph as celebrations and festivities erupted throughout the realm. The air was alive with jubilant cheers and the aroma of feast prepared in our honor. As I surveyed the scene below, my gaze was drawn to the grand statues that now graced the heart of the capital. Towering and majestic, they depicted the three of us in all our glory, capturing the essence of our collective strength and unwavering resolve. These statues, erected as a symbol of gratitude and admiration, stood as a testament to the significant role we played in turning the tide of the war. The realm had transformed, emerging from the depths of despair into a newfound era of hope and prosperity. The scars of battle were gradually healing, replaced by the vibrant spirit of renewal that permeated the land. The people, now free from the clutches of darkness, reveled in the joyous festivities, their hearts brimming with gratitude and admiration for the trio who had led them to victory. Amidst the celebrations, I couldn't help but reflect on the journey that had brought us here. The sacrifices made, the battles fought, and the lives lost all contributed to this moment of triumph. A smile made its way across my face, not bad for a first mission. I inwardly mumbled, satisfied that the realm did not need to be destroyed. As the festivities continued, I felt a profound sense of pride and satisfaction. We had become beacons of hope, guardians of the realm. But beyond that, we had also become a symbol of unity, demonstrating the extraordinary power that lies within collaboration and shared purpose. And so, as I stood atop that hill, overlooking the vibrant realm that we had helped restore, a sense of fulfillment enveloped my heart. The journey had not been long, but the battles were fierce, and we ended up coming on top. Now with our names etched in the annals of history and our statues standing tall as a testament to our heroism, I knew that the realm would forever remember the triumphant tale of the two dragons and goddess who had united the realm against the forces of darkness. Not bad at all, I smiled. Just then, Brita's figure flew toward me from a distance, her form returning to its human size, devoid of the radiant glow that had surrounded her during battle. Despite her stoic expression, a sense of contentment emanated from her being, palpable in the air. Where is Sidis? She inquired abruptly, her voice carrying a hint of curiosity. He's just finishing up his final flight, I replied, casting a glance toward the sky to the west where Sidis was still soaring, his presence a testament to his restless spirit. Didn't we ensure that no shade remnants were left? Besides, the old dragon has also reached out to us. It's time for us to depart, Brita stated, her brow furrowing with concern. A smile crept across my face as I responded, he's not too far away, and I'm sure that he knows the situation. It's just that he has been restless lately now that the fight is over, especially after the battles we've faced over the past month. Brita shook her head in apparent disapproval and gracefully settled herself upon the soft grass beneath us. Her gaze fixed upon the endless expanse of the cerulean sky above, seemingly lost in contemplation. As I joined her, lying down beside her, I couldn't help but feel a sense of tranquility wash over me. We lay there, the gentle breeze rustling the grass around us. Lost in our thoughts, we awaited Sidis's return, ready to embark on the next stage of our journey, to the next battlefield. The azure sky above seemed to hold the promise of endless possibilities. At that moment, Iliax, the old dragon who had sent us here, communicated with us once more. The time had come for our departure, and the teleportation gate had been prepared. I cast a glance towards Sidis, who responded with a resounding roar, a display of his exuberance as he soared higher into the sky. Above us, the familiar shimmering gate materialized, ready to transport us to our next destination. Turning to Brita, the goddess by my side, I couldn't help but wear a smile. Well, it seems like Sidis is eager to lead the way. Shall we? I asked, a playful tone in my voice. Brita simply nodded in agreement, her expression calm and serene. Without hesitation, she transformed into a radiant beam of light, ascending toward the heavens. I followed closely behind her, 
my wings beating rhythmically as I soared toward the awaiting teleportation gate. Chapter 307 New Battle As our journey through the teleportation gate concluded, we emerged into a vast emptiness of space, illuminated by distant stars. It took a moment for my senses to readjust, and before me stood the figure of Eliax, the ancient golden dragon who had teleported us to our mission. Citus and Brita stood on either side of me, their presence reassuring. Grandsons of the Great Destroyer, you have arrived. Eliax's voice resonated with surprise as his gaze swept over our forms. His eyes lingered momentarily on Brita, curiosity flickering in his ancient eyes, before finally meeting my own. I must admit, I underestimated your prowess. The swiftness with which you cleansed Valteria exceeded my expectations. It seems the blood of the Destroyer flows strong within you, Eliax remarked, a faint chuckle escaping his draconic lips. With a nod of appreciation to the old dragon, I replied, We are honored by your words, and we remain committed to our purpose, I answered. As I spoke, I could sense the undercurrent of disdain emanating from Sidis, his eyes filled with memories of the past. The scene of Eliax being pushed to the ground by our grandfather was not one that would be easily forgotten. Brita, on the other hand, appeared indifferent to the exchange, her attention captivated by the beauty of the distant stars. Eliax didn't seem to mind the blatant disrespect displayed by my companions. With a calm demeanor, he continued to address us, sharing the details of our next mission. Your grandfather has already made the decision, he said, his voice unwavering. You will be teleported to the perimeters of Nythoria, a medium-sized planet, to lend your support to the dragons in their battle against the invading Horde of Shades. As Eliax outlined the mission, I absorbed the information, my mind envisioning the challenges that awaited us. The mention of Nythoria ignited a flicker of curiosity within me. A new world, with its own unique struggles and inhabitants, beckoned us. It was an opportunity to forge new alliances, to gain knowledge and experiences. Turning my gaze to Sidis and Brita, I saw a mixture of determination and readiness reflected in their eyes. We accept the mission. With a firm nod and a sense of determination, I expressed our acceptance of the mission. The words left my lips with conviction, resonating in the space around us. Iliax, the old dragon, acknowledged my response with a slight bow, reciprocating the gesture of respect. As he warned us about the intensity of the battle that awaited us on Nythoria, I could sense the gravity of the situation growing. The urgency in his voice served as a reminder of the challenges that lay ahead. We were stepping into another realm embroiled in chaos. Acknowledging his words, I turned to my companions, Sidis and Brita, exchanging a glance that conveyed our readiness for the task at hand. As Eliax instructed us to make our way back to the teleportation gate, I felt a surge of anticipation mixed with a touch of apprehension. With gratitude for the guidance of the old dragon, we offered a final gesture of respect before turning to follow his instructions. The path that awaited us was uncertain, but my resolution was unwavering. Walking toward the teleportation gate, my mind focused, my heart alight with the fire of purpose, as I was prepared to embrace the chaos and uncertainty of this new realm. It was hard to calm my raging emotions. As the teleportation concluded, a wave of disorientation washed over me accompanied by the customary sense of queasiness. The vibrant hues of our previous surroundings faded, replaced by the ethereal glow of cosmic mana that enveloped us during the journey. Within moments, we materialized onto a platform suspended in the vastness of space, our backs facing a colossal planet that loomed ominously. The scene before us unfolded into a breathtaking tableau of chaos and conflict. A sprawling battlefield stretched as far as the eye could see, engulfed in an unrelenting clash between dragons of diverse forms and sizes and a relentless horde of shades. The space crackled with magical energy, resonating with the spells and attacks of both combatants. It was a sight that stirred a mixture of awe, reverence, and a tinge of apprehension within us. Taking in the magnitude of the battle, I felt a surge of adrenaline course through my veins. The dragons fought valiantly, their movements fluid and fierce as they engaged the relentless onslaught of the encroaching shades. The chaotic dance of elements and shadow, scales and mist, served as a vivid reminder of the stakes at hand. Sidis and Brita, standing alongside me, shared a knowing look. Their expressions mirrored a sense of purpose that matched my own. We had arrived in the midst of a war zone. The battlefield beckoned, calling us to immerse ourselves in its turmoil and fight alongside our brethren. As our attention shifted toward the commotion, a colossal dragon diverged from the ongoing battle, descending upon our platform with an earth-shaking impact. The weight of her presence was tangible, even as her wounds gradually closed, fueled by her regenerative powers. 
With a thunderous voice that resonated through the air, she directed her gaze towards us, a mischievous grin etched upon her formidable countenance. First timers, she inquired, her voice carrying a sense of knowing amusement. The dragoness possessed a unique appearance, adorned with emerald-hued scales that glimmered in the cosmic light. Unlike the typical visage associated with dragons, she lacked the prominent horns adorning her head, while her scales seemed to exude an unexpected softness. I offered a gentle nod as a gesture of respect and acknowledgement. Indeed, the three of us managed to cleanse Valterial of the Shades. It was a challenging battle, but we prevailed, I replied, my voice resonating with a quiet sense of accomplishment. A glint of admiration flickered in the dragoness's eyes, a testament to her appreciation of our feat, impressive, she murmured, her voice tinged with a mix of surprise and respect. With a bloodthirsty grin, she continued, her enthusiasm palpable, well, in this place, every additional capable fighter counts. We could certainly use the extra help. Her words made me nod. Brita's expression remained stoic, yet her gaze held a glimmer of determination, while Sidis flexed his claws, his anticipation evident. In response to her invitation, I met her gaze with unwavering resolve. We stand ready to join your ranks. The dragoness let out a thunderous chuckle, her laughter reverberating through the battlefield. I like your spirit, young one. Welcome to the front line of battle. My name is Drelina. Chapter 308 A Space Battle With our alliance forged, we prepared to immerse ourselves in the chaotic dance of combat. Drawing stood atop the platform for a while, replenishing her mana reserves and healing her wounds. Her gaze studied us with a hint of interest before she spoke. But I must say, you sure are one strange group. Two pillars of existence and a goddess, she chuckled. Acknowledging the dragoness's observation, I offered a faint smile in response. We bring together different aspects of power and strength to face the common enemy, I replied, my tone reflecting a sense of understanding. Brita's divine presence and abilities, coupled with the raw might and ferocity of Sidis and myself, created a formidable combination. Drelina's chuckle echoed through the air, a hint of amusement coloring her voice. Well, Nithoria has seen its fair share of unconventional alliances, but yours certainly stands out. It will be interesting to witness the dynamics at play. With a nod, I acknowledged her words. As we prepared to descend into the fray, any differences would fade into insignificance in the chaos of the battlefield. Drelina seemed satisfied as she spoke. The only advice I'd give you younglings is to stay off the edge of the battlefield. Don't stray too far alone. The Shades love to isolate and prey on individual dragons. And unless you are absolutely confident in your strength, I wouldn't go to the front of the battlefield either. Instead, Perhaps it would be wiser for you to stay behind and observe things first as you get a feeling for the battle. Acknowledging the dragoness's advice, I nodded in understanding. Thank you for your guidance, Drelina. We will heed your words and exercise caution. Understanding the importance of unity and strategic positioning, I knew that venturing too far alone could leave one vulnerable to the Shade's tactics. The battlefield here was a different one compared to what we have experienced in Valterial. Drelina nodded in approval her eyes filled with a mix of confidence and wariness. Good. I can see you have a level head on your shoulders. Trust in your instincts, rely on each other, and adapt swiftly to the changing tides of battle. Nithoria needs every capable defender it can get. With her final words of encouragement, the dragoness spread her wings and took off, soaring back into the fray to join her comrades in the ongoing battle. As her form disappeared into the distance, I turned to Sidis and Brita, their determination mirrored in their eyes. With renewed determination, we descended into the raging battlefield, ready to face the onslaught of shades alongside the dragons. Sidis suddenly glanced at me and asked, We can freely use our elements here, right brother? A wide grin extended across my draconic face as I nodded. Why yes, not dear brother. Show them hell. With a mischievous glint in his eyes, Sidis unleashed a mighty roar, his body shimmering with dark energy. Shadows twisted and coiled around him, amplifying his power. His claws extended, crackling with dark mana, and his wings flapped with newfound strength as he stepped off the platform. Ha ha. Sidis laughed, his voice resonating through the platform before he left. In a swift motion, he dove into the midst of the shades, slashing through their ranks with ferocity. Dark tendrils lashed out from his form, ensnaring and disintegrating his enemies, leaving a trail of devastation in his wake. The countless dragons at the back of the battlefield exchanged bewildered glances as they observed the newcomer. Sidis, unbothered by their curiosity, allowed his dark energy to expand, enveloping him like a shroud. 
His form melded effortlessly with the shadows, making him appear like a creature born of darkness itself. The dragons watched in awe as Sid is seamlessly moved through the battlefield, his movements fluid and graceful. Shadows twisted and coiled around him, responding to his will, amplifying his power. With each strike, his claws crackled with dark lightning, unleashing devastating blows upon the encroaching shades. Sidus seemed to relish in the chaos and destruction, as if he had found his natural habitat amidst the vast expanse of space. The darkness became his ally, empowering him to deliver swift and merciless justice to the enemy. His presence sent ripples of fear and unease among the shades, who struggled to comprehend the depth of his power. As he navigated through the battlefield, the darkness seemed to guide his every move, allowing him to strike with precision and efficiency. He was like a phantom, disappearing into the shadows and reappearing where least expected. His adversaries stood no chance against his relentless assault. The other dragons watched with a mixture of admiration and surprise as Sidus proved himself to be a formidable force. His command over the darkness elements was undeniable, and his mastery of the battlefield was awe-inspiring. It was clear that Sidus had found his true element, thriving amidst the vast expanse of space and utilizing the power of darkness to its fullest potential. As I watched over him from afar, I couldn't help but nod in satisfaction. It was clear that Sidus had truly embraced his affinity for darkness, transcending the boundaries of conventional dragon abilities. In the vastness of space, he seemed to have found his element. Beside me, Brita radiated divine energy. Her form suddenly began to glow as she grew back to her normal massive size. She raised her spear high, calling upon the strength of her divine energy. A beam of intense radiance shot forth out of the platform piercing through the darkness of space and straight through the enemy's defenses, purging their malevolent essence. She turned a glance at me for a second before speaking. Are you just going to stand there, smiling like an idiot? Or are you going to come? Saying that her body turned into a beam of light that shot toward the battlefield. Ha uh ha. -huh. My laughter echoed through the platform, a wild and exhilarating sound that matched the intensity of the battlefield. The explosions and flashes of light illuminated my draconic form, casting an otherworldly glow upon my scales. I reveled in the spectacle before me, the symphony of spells colliding, and the sight of magic permeating the space. With each passing moment, the exhilaration coursed through my veins, electrifying every fiber of my being. The thrill of the coming fight consumed me, erasing any trace of fear or doubt. And so, I let myself go. My form shot forth with unmatched speed as my claws sliced through the very fabric of space, leaving trails of sparkling energy in their wake. I unleashed all of my elemental powers with abandon, channeling the raw essence of mana from my soul space into devastating attacks. Amidst the chaos, I danced through the mayhem, dodging enemy attacks with lightning-fast reflexes. My movements were a blur, a symphony of grace and power. Adrenaline coursed through my veins, heightening my senses and sharpening my focus. The bloodlust within me drove me forward, pushing me to seek out new adversaries and conquer them with unmatched ferocity. Chapter 309 Claws and Teeth. The battlefield became my playground, a canvas for me to paint with the vivid hues of destruction. I reveled in the sights of explosions, the expressions of the defeated, and the symphony of battle. It was as if I had tapped into an ancient primal energy, an untamed force that surged within me, urging me to unleash my true potential. There was no room for hesitation or doubt. At this moment, I embraced my primal nature, unleashing the full extent of my power. With every strike, I fueled my hunger for victory, relishing in the chaos I created. The rush of battle was intoxicating, fueling my every move and driving me to push beyond my limits. I refrained from tapping into my cosmic mana or unleashing my poison element. I knew that once I did, the very fabric of the battlefield would shift and the tides would turn in our favor. But for now, I wanted to savor the raw sensation of tearing through the shades with my claws and sinking my teeth into their flesh. I craved the tactile experience the visceral connection with my primal instincts. It might not have been the most strategic decision, but in that moment, my primal nature took over, and I relinquished control. Every swipe of my claws sent shards of darkness flying, slicing through the enemy ranks with deadly precision. The satisfaction of rending flesh and feeling the resistance of their bodies against my talons was unmatched. I relished in the sensation of raw power coursing through my muscles, propelling me forward with every lunge and every pounce. The taste of victory was sweet, and the scent of their disgusting aura filled my nostrils, igniting a primal hunger within me. It was as if a dormant beast had awakened, thirsting for the thrill of the hunt. The adrenaline surged through my veins, heightening my senses and sharpening my focus. 
I could see the terror in their eyes of the shades as I tore through their ranks, their futile attempts to defend themselves only fueling my hunger. In this primal state, I was one with the chaos of the battlefield. I fought alongside my dragon brethren, our movements fluid and coordinated, a symphony of feral grace. The combined might of our claws and teeth carved a path of destruction, leaving a trail of fallen enemies in our wake. We moved as a single entity, each of us driven by our primal instincts, united in our insatiable thirst for victory. As the battle raged on, my senses continued to heighten, attuned to the ebb and flow of the conflict. I could feel the vibrations of each impact, the reverberations of spells colliding. The taste of victory was within reach, and I reveled in the exhilaration of the hunt. But deep within me, I knew that my true power lay dormant, waiting to be unleashed. The cosmic mana and the poison element were like dormant volcanoes, ready to erupt and reshape the battlefield. Just then a shade suddenly lunged at me from behind, only for a colossal brown dragon to intercept the attack with a mighty swat, sending the enemy sprawling. The space around us trembled as the dragon unleashed a barrage of earth spells, causing the elements to rise and ensnare the hapless shade. Without missing a beat, the dragon followed up with a devastating dragon breath attack, a torrent of scorching flames that engulfed the enemy in a fiery inferno. I was momentarily taken aback by the dragon's efficacy and the swift manner in which he dispatched the shade. Before I could even utter a word of gratitude, he simply nodded in acknowledgement and swiftly moved on, his attention already focused on his next target. It was a testament to the ferocity and efficiency of the dragons in this battle. Why are you still playing around for? Brita's voice resonated in my mind, her divine power allowing her words to traverse the vast expanse of space. I turned my attention towards her radiant figure, moving with grace and purpose amidst the chaos. Her presence held a special aura, as she was the only celestial being in this battlefield, the only goddess. With each graceful movement, shades fell before her, vanishing into ethereal ashes that dissipated into the emptiness of space. Her divine energy surged through her, a beacon of light and purity in the midst of darkness. She was a force to be reckoned with, her existence a testament to the power of the divine. Not wanting to be outdone by a goddess and my little brother, I realigned my focus and cast aside the temporary thrill of combat and embraced the weight of our mission once more. My battles became more calculated, each strike and maneuver executed with precision and purpose. As I fought alongside the others, I channeled the untapped potential within me, allowing my cosmic mana to surge forth from within my soul space in a controlled manner. As the cosmic mana surged within me, its raw power radiated outward causing a ripple of astonishment and awe among the combatants on the battlefield. The very fabric of reality seemed to tremble in response, as if acknowledging the arrival of a force beyond comprehension. All eyes turned towards me, drawn to the pulsating energy that enveloped my being. The ethereal thread that connected me to the cosmic forces of the universe now appeared stronger, weaving through space with an otherworldly intensity. The sheer magnitude of the cosmic energy emanating from me created a hushed stillness in the midst of battle. Dragons. Shades, and Brita, my goddess friend, all felt the potent danger that radiated from my transformed state. The once chaotic and relentless battle momentarily paused, as if frozen in time, as everyone present recognized the imminent eruption of power. The battlefield had witnessed formidable fighters and mighty creatures, but the manifestation of my cosmic mana ignited a collective sense of reverence and trepidation. A vibrant purple glow bathed my scales, casting an otherworldly hue that accentuated the ethereal nature of the cosmic energy coursing through me. It was a sight that captivated the onlookers, a visual representation of the immense power at my disposal. In that moment, I felt a surge of confidence and purpose, with the cosmic mana granting me a connection with the very essence of existence. Amidst the hushed silence, a silent understanding passed between the combatants. The Shades, once fierce adversaries, now recognized the overwhelming might that stood before them. The Dragons, awe-inspiring in their own right, acknowledged the arrival of a being whose power surpassed their own. Drelina, who was fighting in the front of the battlefield, turned her gaze my way and grinned savagely. Chapter 310, Draconic Duo With the battlefield as my canvas and the cosmic mana as my brush, I embraced my role as a harbinger of cosmic upheaval. I unleashed the dormant mana inside my soul space harnessing the untapped energy within me to devastating effect. Cosmic spells surged forth with unprecedented intensity, tearing through the ranks of the shades and leaving trails of celestial destruction in their wake. As I unleashed the full might of my cosmic mana, the battlefield transformed into a realm of devastation. 
The shades, once formidable adversaries, now crumbled like fragile paper beneath the unstoppable force that emanated from me, their bodies instantly shredded into pieces, without giving them a second to retaliate. None could withstand the power of my cosmic mana. As it surged through the vast expanse of space, its potency multiplied by the celestial surroundings. The threads that connected me to the cosmic forces of the universe were no longer mere filaments but an intricate web that spanned across the cosmos. They extended from all directions, converging upon me, infusing me with boundless power. It was a sight that took my breath away, the very essence of existence flowing through me in a symphony of cosmic brilliance. At that moment, a profound sense of invincibility consumed me. The cosmic mana enveloped me, shielding me from harm and granting me an unparalleled advantage. It did so out of its own free will which further boosted my confidence and arrogance. I became a force of nature, an entity whose powers surpassed mortal comprehension. I glanced at the battlefield in disdain. It was now akin to my playground, the shades mere playthings in the face of my cosmic might. The very fabric of space-time seemed to warp and distort as I continued to harness the full extent of my cosmic prowess. No longer bound by mortal limitations, or worried about the destruction I would cause, I soared through the chaos with unparalleled speed and grace. My figure subconsciously began to teleport. The shades that dared to stand in my path were swiftly reduced to nothingness, their forms disintegrating before my eyes. As I surveyed the battlefield, awe and fear danced in the eyes of those around me. Friend and foe alike were captivated by the spectacle unfolding before them. Drelina, the seasoned dragoness, seemed unfazed by my newfound might. Instead, she relished in the surge of bloodlust that accompanied the cosmic surge, tearing through the ranks of shades with a renewed ferocity. Brita, who was fighting by my side, spared me a fleeting glance before shaking her head in a mixture of amusement and helplessness. With her own battles to fight, she continued on, using her divine abilities to vanquish the shades in her path. It was Sidis, on the other hand, who stood frozen in awe. This was the first time he had witnessed me unleash my full power, and the sight shook him to his core. The shock reverberated through his body, and I could sense his competitive spirit igniting, fueling his desire to push himself to new limits. A grin drew across my face, as my figure continued to flash across the battlefield. Never in one place for too long, whenever I blinked, shades fell by the dozen. The longer I continued to use the cosmic mana the more, I could feel the weight of it resonating with the very fabric of the universe. I had tapped into a power far greater than myself, and the entire battlefield trembled under the might of it all. The stars above bore witness to the cosmic spectacle, illuminating the battlefield with their distant radiance. The very essence of existence seemed to pulsate through my veins, guiding my movements and empowering my every attack. I was growing stronger by the second. At that moment, I had embraced the infinite potential that dwelled within me, the power that connected my soul space to the cosmic forces of the universe. As Siddhas shook off his initial shock and joined the fray, our combined power surged through the space battleground, leaving a trail of celestial devastation in our wake. Together, we became an unstoppable force. And so, amidst the chaos and the cosmic dance of power, we fought on. A dragon duo, brothers in arms, harnessing the very essence of the universe to vanquish the abominations. We push ahead. With a shared understanding, Siddhas and I locked gazes, wordlessly communicating our intentions. We both knew that the real challenge lay at the front lines, where the fiercest battle raged on. The shades at the far end of the battlefield posed little threat, and it was the heart of the enemy's forces that we sought to confront. As we propelled ourselves forward, our movements synchronized in perfect harmony. The space around us seemed to shake under the combined might of two pillars of existence. We surged through the battlefield, drawing the attention of both allies and adversaries alike. The front line became our focal point and we charged towards it with unwavering determination. Shades scattered in our wake, their feeble attempts to halt our advance proving futile. Each strike, each blast of energy, tore through their ranks, shattering their feeble existence. Space trembled around us as we carved a path of devastation, leaving a trail of destruction in our wake. The other dragons on the battlefield recognized our purpose and cleared the way. They pushed together as one, their combined efforts served as a shield, deflecting the onslaught of lesser shades and allowing us to focus on the true threat. As we neared the front line, the intensity of the battle grew. Space crackled with raw energy, a symphony of clashing elements and roaring chaos. The front line was a maelstrom of elemental power, where the dragons led by Drelina clashed with shades in a struggle for dominance. My grin widened as the bloodthirst surged through my veins. Sidis was no better, his body visibly shaking in excitement with each kill. 
Amidst the chaos, we both moved in perfect synchrony, anticipating each other's moves with an almost telepathic connection. Our pillar forces intertwined, amplifying each other's strength and creating devastating combinations that left the enemy reeling as we weaved a tapestry of destruction and liberation. With every shade vanquished, every obstacle overcome, the front line pushed further back, inch by inch. By the time I realized, both me and Sideds were the ones leading the front line's assault, even Drelina was following us from behind. The tides of battle were turning in our favor as we pressed ahead, driving deeper into the heart of the enemy's forces.